she says. It's lovely. My best friend lives in Bounds Green. It's a beautiful walk up the road. So there you are. Even people in New Jersey know where Bounds Gr- know where Bowes Park is. So shame upon you if you don't. Well, you do now because I've told you and we've been talking about it and we're talking about it all day today because we're round your manor in that particular part of N22. Um, my mate Andy reckons that the Greek rest... What did he say? He sent me a 1947 map of Bowes Park, which is very interesting, Andy. He is a map dealer, so he one is one of his maps. He says, um, Vrisaki, as mentioned on Middleton Road, is for me the best Greek restaurant in North London. Ah, now that's interesting. Because I went and ate Greek food at a chain with my mate Bobby on Saturday after the football. And my mate Bobby is, is half Cypriot. He wasn't impressed. I have to say he wasn't impressed. Um, let's talk to... Olympia in Enfield, who's on the line now. Hello, Olympia. Hello, good morning. Kalimera. Very good to speak to you. So, <laughs> I presume you know this part of the world. Of course I do. I had a shop there for so many years. Um, what, on Middleton Road? Yeah. It was Greek City, but now it's Greek Beat Radio. <laughs> oh, I know Greek Beat Radio. Yes, we are Greek Beat Radio. It's um, it's an on- online uh, web uh, community radio that we help um, the... Uh, small businesses. So if you're going up on the left, are you? Uh, if you're going up the main road, are you, were you on the left-hand side there? I mean, I've, I've, well, I, I, No, we used to be on Green Lanes as Greek City for 40 years. I know. Oh, well, I knew you there. Yeah, basically. that's where you knew us. We, we used to have some old um, videos and stuff, but we got rid of the videos because of blockbusters opening up. <laughs> 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 the but then they shut down before us, so that was a good thing. But anyway. So... Uh, is, which, is it still a very Greek area, would you uh, say? Yes, it is. Um, Greenland has become more um, uh, Turkish, Kurdish. Yeah. So, so the Greeks have moved on, as they always do, <laughs> in their own little place. But Vrisagi has, has been there. The restaurant's been there for 40 years. We've also got the funeral director right. uh, that everyone uses. Um, and because we're getting older, my partner's 76. <laughs> We said, right, let's go to Middleton Road where we'll be near the funeral director. It'll be cheaper cost. <laughs> um, I have to say, before you go any further, I used to live in Haringey when it was still very Greek simple. Oh, yeah, it was brilliant then, wasn't it? And, I, and I'm, I don't mean this in any way negatively. I loved when there was a funeral because they were great. I mean, and I got invited into got invited to a funeral by one of our neighbours who we got to know, and it was just fantastic. Lots of food. And lots, food of yeah. lots of food and lots of love. I mean, it was yeah. wonderful. Yeah, I, well, this is the way I, we feel, and 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 um, well, I'm still involved with Greek Beat Radio. We're doing programs on, you know, with the lawyers, family lawyers, and right. community lawyers, and helping um, people out, you know, w- where we can. And it's lovely. I love it around there. And as as the steps lady just said, um, you know, there's market there and everything else. It's just so lovely. We're a very very friendly area, and I love it. And I hope it stays that way. But it's becoming a little bit. Crouch ending, you know, well, with vintage shops. Isn't and everywhere. <laughs> and, and I'm thinking, oh, please don't put our rent up. Oh. I've just paid our rent, actually, <laughs> just now, and it's so cheap, it's lovely. <laughs> don't say it's cheap, they might be listening. <laughs> no, it is, you know, and it's because it's he's a Greek Cypriot landlord, he knows us, and he knows that, you know, we, we're... Uh, you know, really honourable and very... Uh, so, would you say, because I live in Camden Town, I live in the sort of Mornington Crescent end well, of Camden I, Town. Yeah, my dad used to have a, a shop in Camden Town, Exactly. Actually. So, basically, yeah. the Greek Cypriot community has largely moved, or the Greek community, whichever, has moved, sort of, it started off in Camden Town, then it moved up to Haringey, and now it's moved up to, to kind of Bounds oh, Green. And Bounds that. Green and Southgate. Yeah. Yeah, well, but there's quite a big yeah. Italian community up that way as well, wasn't there? In South yeah, there is still. In, you know, I think they've moved to kind of Waltham Cross area. The Italians, so right. there's a lot of Italians in Waltham Cross, Waltham Abbey right. um, area. Now, um, you know, which, where, where I, I live, sort of in the middle of a field, because <laughs> I, I like it really quiet, and, right. and that's where I live. Um, but it, it, I just love that buzz, and and and, and Middleton Road. I forgot to... Oh, God, this is the most important thing. Middleton Road um, got got the award for the best high street in the UK. I know, that's why we're looking at it. I was surprised. And what do you mean you were surprised? <laughs> well, <laughs> no, but you Thank think you. it might... You, but only because... <laughs> no, I don't mean I'm surprised like that. But for to have picked, essentially, a suburban high street... 
Right. Is it just, you know, when you I thought, know. oh, they might have picked Marylebone High Street or they uh, might have picked... To tell you the truth, we were all a bit shocked. <laughs> <laughs> so it weren't just me. <laughs> we did work at it hard. And really? We got, because on the radio, you know, we, oh, yeah. we kind of said, vote for us, vote for us, you know. And they did. So, um, it, you know, we, we really, wow. But nothing has happened. <laughs> we don't know what's going on. <laughs> <laughs> OK, we're, we're at best high street. Well, what's going on? Don't put our rent up and, um, you know. Well... Long may it continue, because oh, I, th- I think you. I think the the thing about places like this is they find a balance, don't they? Yeah. But that can easily tip over one way or the other. So. Yeah, but if you want good food, you come to Middleton Road. If you want great music, you can come to. Uh, you, if you want vintage shops, if you want nice little cafes like Steps, and um, you know, a good halloumi and lunza sandwich, brilliant toasted sandwich you can get. You have got a Greek baker's there. You have got uh, actually Greek from the mainland. Um, right. uh, goods, um, which is Hellenic Gourmet, which is brilliant shop. Uh, and they bring Greek, Greek stuff, not Cypriot. Right. Uh, Greek oils, Cretan oils, fantastic stuff, really delicious stuff. What a, what a wonderful advocate you are. Oh, thank you, darling. Olympia, lovely to talk to you. <laughs> thank you. It's 10.30, it's time for the news headlines. Wasn't she great? <laughs> I want to introduce somebody now. I'd like you to all meet Caroline Simpson from the Bowes Park Community Association because, of course, we are round your manor in Bowes Park today. And Caroline has been living in that manor for quite some time and she's here to tell us more. Welcome to the show, Caroline. Oh, good morning. Nice to be here. Now, I feel a bit bad, really, because I'm meant to know London rather well. I didn't really know where Bowes Park was. Is that unusual, do you think, or do you often have to explain to people? Oh, I think I have to explain to people. <laughs> I sort of did, I say, well... You know where Muswell Hill is? And they'll go, oh, yes. Or you say, well, you know where Wood Green is? And they say yes. And then you give them directions from either from Wood Green or from Muswell Hill. But, I mean, it's a, it's a lovely area. And I didn't know it before I moved in. When, how long have you been there yourself? I moved there in 1999, so quite a while now. And would you say it's changed? Uh, it's quite a long time. Would you say it's changed a lot in that time? In the time I've been there, yeah. yes, it has changed. If for the, in what way? What, what have been the big changes? Would you uh, say? Well, in fact, the day I moved, I think it was the day I moved in, there was a piece of paper stuffed through the door inviting local residents to the first meeting, or the, yes, the inaugural meeting, of, uh, to, in order to start up a local association in order to try and improve the area, especially to try and improve the area around the station, the area around Middleton Road, um, and generally to try and make it nicer from a sort of less rubbish and generally make it a, a pleasanter place to live. So you're, you've been there for the entire time yes. the Community Association? Yes. Have you been involved from the beginning? I have. I went to the, my par- my children said, oh gosh, look mum, look at that, and go along. And I went along and yes, I, I suppose I've been on the committee too long, but I've been on it ever since. And yeah, I enjoy doing things with the community, for the community. I think it's... Uh, I think it's fun. What sort of community is it? We've heard that there's quite a large Greek Cypriot um, community in that part of the world. And I I presume like everywhere else in London, it's quite diverse. Well, one of the things I really like about it is is how diverse it is. Um, It does have quite a Greek Cypriot community, especially on Middleton Road. But I mean, for instance, on Middleton Road, we've got a number of shops that, that sell food. We've got a super, uh, supermarket run by Eritreans, one by one run by people from Nepal, one run by people from Turkey. Wow! We've got a Greek baker's, a Greek deli, and a Polish deli. I mean, it's you know, and that's on a little short street. Um, it's really, it's it's. Uh, there are lots of there are Irish people. There has been a large Polish incoming group recently, um, but basically, it's it's mixed and it's. Pleasantly mixed, and and Middleton Road's been winning winning awards, hasn't it, for, as one of the best high streets in, in London. <laughs> I think it's one of the best up and coming high streets in London. Uh, yes, no, we're delighted that it won that. I mean, people have worked very hard uh, on Middleton Road in various ways for the last what, however many years now, eighteen years. Uh, so uh, no, so it it uh, it deserves it for the amount of effort that people are putting in, and I think the fact that it won the award will make even more people interested in coming there and interested to rent some of the shops that are still there and make some of the landlords who've been a bit iffy about actually letting their properties go on the ground floors actually think about oh well it'd be quite a good idea to actually let out, let out my property. I mean it's called Middleton Road, and I, it's taken me a long time, of course, to realise that there's a link to a part of London I do know very well, which is in. Islington, the Middleton Square, 
one of my best friends lives in Middleton Square. And of course, they're linked, aren't they, by, by, by water? Yeah, they're linked by water. And uh, Middleton was the name of the man who was instrumental in bringing water into North London, without which North London wouldn't have been able to grow because... Uh, because there wasn't any fresh water This is the new river we're talking about. And this about. is the new river. And the new river uh, used to have great big bends in our direction. But uh, in, the, in the mid-19th century, uh, they sorted out the bend. And we've got a wonderful thing. We've got the new river tunnel that goes under part of our area. And it's not allowed to be built on. So there is open space on top of where the tunnel is. Actually on top of the, what you Actually, like, on, yes, right. there's a, the, the new river itself comes down into Middleton Road. We've got this wonderful thing called the new river path right. that you can walk along along the river. Then when it gets to Middleton Road, there is a, um, a rather wonderful, in fact, it is wonderful, um, uh, tunnel entrance, which is a listed building. And the river goes into that tunnel and goes down that tunnel for over a kilometre and then comes out at Alexander Palace and Alexander Park. And the all the land on top of that, because it's got this wonderful brick built tunnel underneath it, mm. um, is not allowed to be built on. So we've got. Uh, first of all, we've got a little park, then we've got the allotments, then we've got a bigger park, then we've got a rather wonderful meandering um, open pathway, then there's another even bigger park that takes you through to Ali Pali. So there's this wonderful so could you green walk link. So sort of potentially all the way through? along. You, know, you can good, indeed, really? except, except one little bit. You can't walk through the allotment gardens, right. but you can walk down a very nice Victorian street instead. Um are you at all concerned about sort of gentrification and things? Yes, yes. <laughs> As are all I mean, ideas. you know, part of me is not concerned about gentrification. I live there. I bought my house. And I bought my house at a time when housing... When you could. <laughs> at, when I could. And uh, I'm extremely glad I could. Now, uh, moving from where I moved from, I might be able to. I might well not be able to. And it's very noticeable how it has got gentrified. But... It's still a very mixed community. There are a lot of rented properties. Is there social housing very much in the area? Uh, there's, there are various bits of social housing. There is one. There are two very large tower blocks that was built as council housing, which actually um, have got, again, some quite good open spaces around them. Um, so there, there is some social housing. And we try as far as possible with the things that we do with the local residency association to provide events that, everybody across the community would like to come to and and they do and people for instance i've got a little garden so i don't actually need to go out into other people's gardens or into a public space but i do because i enjoy it but we have tried to make um the small public garden and the larger public open space of Finsbury Gardens very much nicer so that all those people who don't have back yeah, gardens got somewhere to and go. live in flats and have got kids have got somewhere to go and somewhere to play. Is it very much an area of people with children? Are there a lot of families in the area? Yes, and there, there have been many more younger families have been coming in. The demography has changed quite a bit recently. Um, it sounds like just one of those bits of London that sort of works, really. Quietly it, goes about its business and, and gets on with it. It's terrific. I mean, I, I love it. I mean, I find it a very safe place to live. It's wonderful from a transport point of view. So, yeah, what are the transport links? Oh, the transport you, links you have an terrific. overground station. Don't We've you? got an overground station that opened in 1880, which was really one of the main reasons that the area grew at all. It was then that the land started to be being sold off by the manor and farm that actually owned the land. And... Um, We've also got, so that one goes into either King's Cross or, or Moorgate. Right. And then it goes outside as far as you want to go, really. And uh, we're, we're on, we've got an underground station. And yeah, the Bounds underground Green. State, or... Yeah, Bounds Green. Uh, and Bounds Green's on the Piccadilly line. And then we've got buses that go in four directions and you can get literally anywhere on a bus. So if you, for some reason, are allergic to trains and undergrounds, you can get anywhere in London on a bus. It sounds like a great bit of London, and I'm very glad that you've come in to tell us more about it. Is it a very um, active community association? Yes, it's a very, it is an active community association, and it's a community association that has sort of encouraged offshoots. So that there is now a very, uh, very active walking group, for instance, right. that walks every two or three weeks and does walks around London and in the local area. And I think this weekend they've got one 
going from Russell Square to somewhere or other, yeah. um, down in town. And they produce little walking sheets so, so that people can go for walks. So we've got that. We've got one of our members started a little local choir. And it's not a little local choir anymore. It's actually a big local choir. And they've been singing in fancy places as well as locally. And they meet every Thursday and everybody enjoys that. We've got a folk singing group that meets in... Um, a, a small Greek restaurant down on the corner of, of, of Middleton Road and that meets mm, once every once every six weeks, once every couple of months. And so we've got all these sort of little offshoots mm. which is really which is really lovely. So there's lots to do. Is there a kind of a focal point? Is there a, not a town, obviously it's not a town hall, but is there a, a hall or a place that you can use or do you meet or whatever? That at the moment is uh, actually one of the big problems. But is it? We, we ha- yes, because no, there isn't, and the the schools that we that we the school halls and school rooms that we can use are sort of somewhat on the edge of the organiser of the of the area. But we have great hopes for a very extraordinary little building called the Tin Tabernacle. Oh, or I th- other, is, it a, is it one of the old Tin Tabernacles? It was one of the, iron, yes, right. it was one of the old Tin Tabernacles. Right. Um, it's in a more than dilapidated state now because they had to take the roof off. But the Samaritans, it belongs to the Samaritans. They put in various applications to just knock it down and turn it into rather crummy flats, which we fought and we won. They then put in an application to actually convert the building completely into um, into a hall to be used by the local community, to be able to be rented out and to have their own offices uh, in a rather well-built extension at the back. Now, that went through on planning. We all congratulated them about that and everybody supported it. They are waiting to hear their final yes or no from the big lottery. And we're all keeping our fingers crossed that that'll happen. Because if that happens, if they do get that funding, and there are very good signs that they will, then that will become uh, a very wonderful a focus for, yeah. The, yeah, for, the, for the area. Well, if people are interested in the Bose Park Community Association, do you have a website? We do have a website, yes, which is www.bosepark.org and .org.uk. And there's also a very good website run by one of our members and who who set up this thing really, I don't know, I think he set it up on his own with a load of mates and it's called Bows and Bounds Connected. And that is a wonderful website that that looks at a slightly larger area and is a very chit-chatty. Our, our website's not so chit-chatty, but that is very chit-chatty. And there are some wonderful, uh, I mean, I've, put up things about the new river and stuff and there are photographs on it and there's all sorts of things on it. So that Bows and Bounds Connected is a really good website. Caroline Simpson from the Bows Park Community Association, thank you very much. Uh, thank you for having me. We were also talking about uh, Bows Park. Yes, which I suppose I know. But uh, it's just because I know wood green and bounds green and it fits in there. How do it? you know it, that bit of the world? Uh, I know it because I had friends in Wood Green and I was a regular visitor to Wood Green and we were talking about pubs and music. I saw Roxy Music for the first time somewhere in Wood Green. And really? I don't particularly want to start another which pub would it have been, <laughs> but I went to the back room in a pub and stood that close to Roxy Music really? at one of their in very Wood earliest. Green? Yes, wow. in Wood Green. And I remember it particularly because the father of a very close friend of mine had a small bit part in the chorus of the English National Opera and he lived in Wood Green. And the idea that somebody knew someone that was an opera singer in the chorus was quite an exciting proposition to me at that time. Uh, Wood Green, that area, was... Well, Bowes Park, I am told, was once one of the most desirable places to live in North London. Its railway station opened in 1880. Wood Green, or rather more romantically, as it was originally called, Wody Green. Tottenham Wody Green is what Wood Green was originally called. The manor house was called the Ducats. It was destroyed in the 18... Common, isn't it? Is there? Yes, it was destroyed in the 1870s. What changed Wood Green forever was the construction of the New River, bringing fresh water in from Amwell to New River Head in Islington, Uh, Because there were a lot of um, navigators, the people that dug the canals that came to settle in Wood Green. 
and the population went up up very very quickly the opera the population of all of that area presumably including bowers park in 1690 it was 50 people and it went up by 1698 to 100 and by 1848 to 400 although the thing that made the biggest impact on wood green was the building of alexandra palace to which I had been a regular visitor because at one time I was appointed as architect to Alexandra Palace. Right. I had two tasks. One was to stop it being listed. Really? It wasn't listed. And my instructions were, please, can you... It Because it was riddled with so many problems, the last thing that the local authority who are responsible for it wanted for it to be listed. And I wrote a document, Alexandra Palace. The question of listing. And it ended up on the desk of Michael Heseltine, who on a summer's afternoon said, I've never been to Alexandra Palace. So with my report in hand, he went, liked it and spot listed it. So I failed in that endeavour. The rest of my task was to try and get more people to go to the ice skating rink. The wonderful television museum, the first television station in the world that is now a museum, and to breathe life into the wonderful Victorian theatre that's hidden within the bowels of Alexandra Palace. My solution to its isolation, which is something that's still dear to my heart, was the idea of a cable car from Wood Green Underground Station up the hill to the palace. Because if you go there, as I've been to, to concerts and events, it's um, a rather difficult job to get there and get away. Oh, it is, of... yeah. That's one of the problems so, with it. So hail my cable car, please. Bring back the idea. Right, then. So that's your experiences of that particular part the of the part North of the London. world. Fond, fond, fond memories of opera singers, Roxy Music and the possibilities of a cable car. Maxwell Hutchinson, thank you very, very much. It's 11.30. Time for the news headlines from Matthew Schofield. 